Bayou Boys. I'm Boudreaux. And I'm Thibodeau. And there's three things that we love doing. Eating boudin, eating crawfish, and watching WGS TV. Hello everybody, welcome to another installment of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash Russell Gamer and FX TV. I'm the Russell Gamer, don't believe only Boudreau, and as long as Impact Wrestling is still on Spike TV for the remainder of the year, of course, yours truly will be doing reviews of the show, and this is going to be the review for the week of November 19th, 2014, and as you guys heard yesterday about the big move from uh, Impact Wrestling is moving to Destination America, but that's not until... January 2015. Um, so until then, you know, it's going to stay on Spike. I'm going to watch it on Spike, and I'm going to, and on the following days, I'll talk to you guys about it right here on the View, as I always do, right here on WGS TV. So um, um, anyway, guys, um, I'm at, at the moment. I'm trying to see if I can get a couple of the other guys here to come on here for the review, um, but. Um, I'm a little pressed for time, so th that's why I decided to go ahead and and start the review without them. So uh, let's go ahead and start off with, um, Impact Wrestling Bobby Roode coming out basically to call call out Bobby Lashley for a fight to uh, kind of respond for what what he did to Eric Young last week and what he did to Austin Aries, and he was challenging him to a fight, and that's pretty much what happened. You know, they just you know fought into the crowd until security uh, separated. You know. You know, basically cut and dry. Um, the, um, we will cut to a short backstage segment. EC3 is going to call out um, Rockstar Spun later in the evening. That's pretty much how they, they wor worded it. Um, one thing to say about Impact Wrestling this week, guys, literally for every match and every segment, there was a different hashtag. Like for the opening segment with Bobby Roode, it was hashtag Roode versus Lashley. Opening match, it was the uh, it was a three way dance for the Knockouts Championship, Havoc versus Taryn Terrell and versus Gail Kim, and the hashtag for that one was hashtag Havoc versus Gail versus Taryn. Um, and again, what what I really take away from this match, again, the the amazing work that the TNA Knockouts do, you know, and in just you know, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but it's just something I I keep saying. You know, the spots that these the TNA knockouts do, you would never see from the divas on the main roster in the WWE. I mean, you would never see them do what Taryn Terrell did. Uh, you would never see what Taryn Terrell, uh, you know, take a, a header into the guardrail. You would never see any of them do a choke slam. You would never see any of them do high, across bodies. Well, Rosa, well, Layla maybe, maybe, AJ, AJ Lee maybe as well. I've seen her do it, but there's a there's a great deal of things that they, they do in TNA that definitely you wouldn't see from the uh, WWE divas. So um, maybe the NXT divas, but not certainly not the main roster divas. But the finish of the match, you know, they they took out Havoc. You know, it was the eat defeat, then the cutter by Taryn Terrell, and then they go into like a pinning uh, swap, and the Terrence Terrell countered a jackknife pin into a sunset flip pin. Terrence Terrell picks up the win and becomes the new knockouts champion. So, hey, she's a Louisiana girl. I approve. Um, following that, it was a uh, Chris Melendez and Kenny King. Um, again. Something I said on the Facebook page last night is the fact that every time I see Chris Melendez, I get more and more impressed. You know, he is just constantly evolving his move set, you know, what he can do in the ring. You know, he's learning on a day by day basis from, from the way it looks, in my opinion. And so far, he is. Doing, I'm going to say a, a bit better than Zach Gowan. You know, whenever Zach Gowan re would wrestle, he'd just take off that prosthetic leg. Melendez keeps it on, and not only keeps it on, but kind of makes it obvious that he uses it. I mean, 
I, I gotta say, I'm very impressed with the way he's been able to kind of incorporate that into his move set. You know, in, in fact, that you could pull off a fisherman's suplex with a bridge, with with a one leg and a prosthetic leg. I mean, to me, that's amazing. It's amazing. Um, the, but what was not amazing is the finish of the match. The finish of the match, it was MVP you know, coming in with a steel chair, assaulting the leg of Chris Melendez, and Anderson would, would come in to try to make the save and just didn't make it in time. And they had to kind of escort him. But uh, Melendez picks up the win via disqualification. If you want to, you guys want to be all official about about it, I know a lot of you guys out there don't want to be. Um, up next, it was EC3 calling out Rockstar Spud. Um, th this week's outfit for Rockstar Spud, the Brick Motif. Yep. An outfit with, bricks, with a brick design. Basically, he could go behind a wall and nobody would see him. That's the kind of way it looked. But um, EC3 was giving uh, Rockstar Spud, you know, the chance to hit him. And Rockstar said, I'm not going to hit you in the face. I'm going to kick you in your nether region. Well, he said another word, but I'm not going to repeat it. I'm, I'm in my parents' home. I, I don't think they would appreciate that kind of language. Um I will say this though, uh, you know, they decimated um, Rockstar Spot again. Um, I, now I didn't exactly see where the, the spot happened, where the, the EC3 was ha had, you know, with blood going down his going down his face like that. I'm not exact, exactly sure as to what happened um, because I've, I've gone back and I watched it, and I still can't see, you know, what exactly happened. You know, maybe it was like a botch on the uh, the punches. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I will say this: they're really building up Rockstar Spud to kind of be that underdog type of guy. You know, Eric Young kind of had that a little bit when he first became World Heavyweight Champion with uh, during MVP as uh, MVP's first heel turn, and and now they're kind of delegated that to Rockstar Spud, and they want to see how uh, he would. Uh, how he would cope with it and how um, his character would handle it and you know can get over in the crowd and right now from the way it looks it looks like yeah he can he can get over with the crowd so it's gonna be really interesting to see uh, where they go next with that <clears throat> excuse me um following that the hardcore rules match tommy dreamer and bram two uh, two guys that really know hardcore wrestling tommy dreamer and a new guy, Brand. He really seems to really have incorporated that into his gimmick. Um, I gotta say, when TNA does hardcore rule matches, they go on as like old school ECW style. I mean, they even they even uh, you know did the blood and everything too, and which really made it more more uh, sold it more, in my opinion, is what I'm trying to say. You know, um, you know they were using all kinds of weapons. I, I like the finish of the match. Um, well, first off, Magnus would interfere to help give Bram the advantage. And then out come Al Snow. Yes, you heard me right. Al Snow, who looked in fantastic shape, by the way. You know, he looked in really, really good shape. He looks like he's got a lot left in him. And I would definitely like to see him do a big run in TNA because he, from the way he looks, he looks like he can still go and go strong. Um, and the, the finish, there was a steel chair wrapped in barbed wire wedged in between the ropes in the, in the corner. Bram would send Tommy Dreamer head first into it and then hit an impaler DDT to pick up the win. So Bram, once again, is the hardcore king in TNA. But I, I will say this, though. They did a great job of that match. I mean, really, really a great job. You know, can't say nothing bad about it. I mean, it was really well worked. And I'm I'm really anxious to see if they go further now with Al Snow and, and Magnus, you know, just based on what they did last night. You know, are we looking forward to a, a tag match now? 
with these guys, I really want to see where they go from here. I, and I'd really like to see what they do next. Um, we need to crown a new X Division champion. Uh, Samoa Joe relinquished the title uh, in the previous week due to an injury. Again, you know, we still have no idea what the injury is. We have no idea uh, what the injury was. Uh, Samoa Joe, again, never really specified in his promo last week exactly, you know, the extent of his injury and, and what happened. You know, that's, that's still kind of a mystery. So I'm still wondering exactly what happened with Samoa Joe. But, um, again, one of the real reasons, one of the real big major things for me that really drew me towards TNA was the X Division. And boy, oh boy, did they shine in this matchup for the X Division Championship. It was DJ Z, Manic, Loki, and T Gray Uno. Man, they, again, the X Division is just so amazing in TNA. You know, I, it was. There was really two things that were big, big for me to uh, get me into TNA. It was the X Division and the Six Sided Ring, and they brought both of those really, both those concepts really back into the company. Um, now, I, I think I, I kind of, I'm not happy over the fact of the channel move when they just brought back two of the things that I love about TNA, and they're moving to another channel that I don't have, and I wouldn't be able to watch the product. So I, I'm not exactly happy about that, but uh, but long story short, uh, you know the X Division Championship, it was low key with the with the key crusher off the top rope, the T Great Uno. Uh, Mike Tony said they call it the Avalanche Key Crusher. I'm not exactly sure if that's uh, an, an an accurate saying to it, but. Um, Loki picks up the win, becomes the X Division champion, and was overcome with the emotion. Um, like he finally did it, you know. Um, I know Loki. I think Loki was the X Division champion one other time. I think during his initial run in TNA, but his initial run in TNA was like in the early years of TNA. When it was like NWA TNA. Um, you know, he was like, I, wouldn't he attack? No, that's. I'm, I was thinking uh, Christopher Daniels and Elix Skipper. I thought Loki was with. Uh, I think Loki was with Triple X, if I'm not mistaken, because I think it was him. It was um, it was Elix Skipper. It was Christopher Daniels, and I think Loki. I might be wrong on that, you know, because I'm trying to remember. But I do remember Loki being part of a faction, and the only one that that really comes to mind for me is is the, the triple X faction that he was in with uh, Christopher Daniels and primetime Elix Skipper. And, and that's a name that's probably hasn't been said in a long time. Elix Skipper. I'd like to know where he's at and what he's been doing nowadays. But um, again, you know, just to get back to the review, Loki is your new X division champion. Um, backstage, Kurt Angle is looking for MVP, uh, you know, to talk to him about what he did. To uh, Christopher Melendez, um, MVP then attacks him from behind, which causes the uh, the final segment. Kurt Angle calling out um, MVP, thinking that you know Kurt Angle was going to fire him, and Kurt Angle said, "You know what? Firing is too easy. Um, I'm probably going to get in trouble with this." But then he starts attacking um, MVP, which brings out Kenny King to, uh, to come to the aid. And during the attack, MVP was started pushing away from Kenny King. I, I wonder if that's you know, signifying that they're finally going to break off the stable of MVP Kenny King and Bobby Lashley, you know, with MVP just doing all these things to, you know, get away from the group, to get away from Lashley, to get away from Kenny King. You know, again, it, it, and it, to be honest, it's not a bad move for TNA. I mean, what did the, the stable of Kenny King, MVP, and Lashley really do besides win the championship? Um, El Zippo, nothing really, not not a not a damn thing is what they did. Um, but uh, then Lashley would come out, um, which then prompted Bobby Roode to come out. Um, he would take, uh, he would pull Kenny King to the floor, and they would start fighting. And that's pretty much how they ended uh, Impact Wrestling. Um, so I'm really interested to see. Uh, where they go next because they're really starting to really intensify the feud between Root and Lashley also when it pertains to the uh, World Heavyweight Championship. So I'm really like to see, you know, 
again, it, like I said at the onset of the review, you know, it's still a, a and, you know, I even said it yesterday. It's the fact that, you know, they're moving to a channel I don't have, and I think it just flat out sucks. You know, from my standpoint, from their standpoint, being a business, being a promotion, you know, if Destination America can really, you know, put some backing into TNA and make them a better company for it, then, you know what, I'm all for it. And, and for all we know, you know, Destination America might be picked up on, on more satellite companies and more uh, cable companies and, and be put on their lineup. So, like you know, we can't really say nothing bad about that. My overall score on Impact Wrestling this week is going to get a three out of five. Um, I thought it was a fairly decent show. Um, best match of the night is hands down is going to go to the Hardcore match. Uh, I'm I'm an old school ECW kind of kind of guy. You know, I started watching ECW Hardcore TV. Um, you know, I used to have all the ECW DVDs. You know, like Blood Sport, The Rise and Fall of ECW. Uh, ECW's most violent matches, you know, and I'm going to sit there and just watch it and you'd just be thoroughly entertained with what some of the stuff they used to do. And w what they did with Dreamer and Bram in that matchup was old school ECW style, in my opinion, including the cheese grater to the head. I like that. I, I thought that was a good touch. Um, worst segment? You know, I, I think the only thing I, I can really think of to fall into that category this week really was MVP attacking Kurt Angle backstage. Uh, um, you know, it, it used to be a lot easier to pick my worst uh, segment because Dixie Carter used to be on uh, every every Impact Wrestling, and now she's not. And it, it makes it hard for me to pick something because Dixie Carter was just so bad at selling stuff. You know, it was easy to make that the worst segment of the night. And, and now she's not on there anymore, so I, I really, I might really have a hard time with that, you know. And I want Dixie Carter to stay off TV, but yet I want her to come back on TV so that way I could start dissing her again for being so terrible at promos on Impact Wrestling. I don't know if that's an insult or a compliment. You guys can take it either way, you know. But um, anyway, um, what I want to know now from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Impact Wrestling this week. What are your overall scores? What are your picks for best and worst match or segment of Impact Wrestling this week? I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash WGSTV. And don't forget to please subscribe to youtube.com slash WrestleGamer and youtube.com slash TV Network if you haven't already. Also, stay tuned to WGSTV because in... Just a few short minutes, I will have a review of John Cena's Greatest Rivalries DVD. Be sure you look for that video. It'll come up really soon right here on WGS TV. So with that being said, I'm the Russell Gamer, Double B, Billy Boudreaux, saying thank you very much for watching.